the presentations this week, uh, because of the legal environment that we are in right now, we are not able to talk directly about Nature Sunshine's formulas, so we're going to be just talking about ingredients, or the instructors will be talking about ingredients in the formulas. And uh, that is uh, where we're coming from as far as um, our presentation today. We just want to make sure that you're aware that's the situation as you hear Dr. Hollis and the other presenters this week, they're going to be talking about ingredients in the formulas and not specifically the names of the formulas. And um, we thought we just better make sure that you were fully aware of that. Again, we're so excited that so many of you have joined us as we begin the webinar today. We have nearly 360 people and that is going to grow in the next few minutes. And so we're very, very excited that so many of you are here. Thanks so much for being here. Now we're going to introduce Dr. Matt Hollis. Dr. Matt Hollis is a very good friend of mine. I met uh, Matt earlier this year in the month of January in 2014, and uh, he traveled to uh, a class that I was uh, teaching with Lawrence Smith, and uh, Matt and I met at that time and had a, a very great day. It was on the 21st of January, I remember that, just as plain as day. Some great events happened that day in uh, my life and uh, Matt's life and also Lawrence Smith's life. It was quite quite uh, a wonderful day to say the least. But uh, folks, we're so excited that so many of you are here. We're so excited that you have joined us. Let me tell you just a little bit about uh, Matt as we begin. And uh, again, his topic is type 2 thyroid imbalance and liver metabolism. Matt is the executive director of the International Institute of Natural Wellness Education and also knowyourwellness.org. You will see that uh, website in the bottom left side of your uh, slides the entire time he's presenting. Uh, he runs an excellent school. He's nationally board certified naturopathic doctor. He's nationally board certified as a diplomat in nature uh, naprapathy and also knight in the sacred metal medical order of the Knights of Hope. And uh, Matt will have to tell you a little bit more about that because I honestly don't know all about those great designations and, and uh, certificates and so on that he has been certified in, but we are honored to have Dr. Matthew Hollis uh, take it over from here. Dr. Matt, go ahead. Well, thank you so much for uh, having me here um, there, Ray. It's a real privilege to be with here with everyone that's on the call today. Um, my, this is an area that I'm very passionate about. My background started as nu in nutritional therapy before I went into naturopathic medicine and then into nephropathy, which is a, a manual therapy that uh, um, works with ligaments and tendons. Um, and then, as, as mentioned, I, I enjoy the opportunity to travel um, internationally and help um, with the Knights of Hope in their work in providing um, aid where medicine is not so readily available. If I could there, Ray, I'd like to um, veer off topic for just a moment and maybe share with those uh, that are on the call with us that aren't familiar with, with myself and, and um, kind of share the story that you're familiar with, Ray, as far as how we uh, came to be working so closely with Nature Sunshine. Do you mind if I take just a minute for that? That would be great. No problem at all. Okay. Um, it, you know, as, as Ray mentioned, um, I've been executive director of the International Institute of Natural Wellness Education for, oh, about 10 years now. And during the process of that, we started out uh, um, providing um, doctors and educators all around the country um, for shows and trainings and um, really linking up the right educators for the right events and then went into our full school um, outreach program where we provide herbology and naturopathic medicine programs. And in the process of that, one of the problems that I ran into a lot is consistency in training. We would have these trainings where we were teaching people assessment techniques, uh, be it muscle testing or pulse testing or other techniques, and people would bring in their own supplements, and then we would get varying results on the tests. And it wasn't because they weren't a competent, um, uh, it wasn't that their test abilities weren't well, it's that the supplements varied so greatly that they, we didn't get the same repeatable tests. And so I really realized that um, up until then, we, had, we, and we still maintain that we try to, uh, we don't have our own supplement line, we don't push a supplement line, we just provide the phenomenal education. But I, it, I came to this realization that 
for our own in-class use, I needed to have a company that I could use their products exclusively in our classes and in our trainings so that we could get re repeatable you know, um, experiences so that I knew that when they were doing the testing it would work time after time. So I went through a very unique process that I, I, I think would be valuable for most of you on the call to have the experience that I did in, in going through and that I contacted many, many um, companies, over a dozen um, large well-known companies that most of you on this line would know and spoke with them um, about their product line. And I wasn't worried about their marketing plan. I wasn't worried about who was the most exciting and the most, you know, best marketing material. I wanted to know who had product that was, com you know, consistent and the quality was there. And everyone, of course, assured me that they were the only company that had such quality products, but that, you know, having a science mind, that was not enough for me. So I took it from there and started to ask the right questions, and some of them could answer. Some of them kind of fell out right at that first uh, preliminary discussions, and some of them could answer the questions right, that they had the proper testing. But I had, it was really interesting, some of the experiences I had. I had one large company that all of you on this line would know. I was sitting down with some of their top people and explaining to them that we wanted to have a product that we could use. It was repeatable, and, and we had heard good things. They, they, they looked at me and they said, you know, I really appreciate what you're doing and I think your school is phenomenal, but to be honest, we don't want to um, have our distributors focused on learning. We want to make sure they're focused on, on selling. And so we really don't want, you know, your, your connection with us. And, you know, that's when I realized if they're, they were scared about people learning the body and all they wanted was for people to sell, that was definitely not the right company. So I continued my search and then I asked to tour the facilities. I said, okay, you've told me the right questions. I want to see where you're producing your supplements. And that is where Nature's Sunshine, you know, became very apparent that they were the choice for us. It wasn't just that they had the vast amount of products that I could draw from because anybody that's going to be a, a competent therapist needs more than one, you know, one product or one juice. They need a, a vast amount of products. But it was that I went, and that's where what Ray talked about. I, I traveled with, uh, with Lawrence Smith, one of our professors for the International um, Institute here, and Professor Smith took me down. He said, I think we, can have, we have, may have a product that would work for you, and he took me down to Nature's Sunshine, and, and I gave them a very thorough <laughs> looking through. We spent a lot of time touring the facilities, and that's really what I hope you, I bring this up because I, I know in this particular industry there's always a new company that's coming out with faddish marketing material and some amazing story of something they found, you know, algae under the polar ice cap or some other crazy story. I hope you realize that if your, your purpose, and I suppose those of you on this call already do understand that the purpose that if you have to help people it, you'd, I've never found a company like Nature Sunshine, so we've been very grateful to work with Nature Sunshine and to have a product that um, over this past year as we've used it in classes all over the country, we've, we've been able to achieve what we were looking for, which is consistency in our testing because the products are the same every time. So I really appreciate uh, you there, Ray, for, for being patient with me as we went through that process and as I hit you with as many questions as I could and um, toured your facility. I really appreciate your time in that. No problem, Matt. We've just had some comments from several members of the audience and also sure. our listening crew here. Uh, do you have any way that you could dial into the call? It would be very helpful. We're getting uh, sound quality issues here. Do you mind dialing into the call? Um, I am on that. And okay, give me that number if you would, please. Um, do you have that number? Or can you text me that number? Yeah, it'll just be a second here. Hold on. Perfect. Let me let me freeze the slides. We'll be right with you. Would you like me to go ahead and continue while we're making that adjustment there, Ray? Um, just a second, Matt. I'm almost there.
Matt, I'm texting this number to you even as we speak. Wonderful. I will go ahead and, and call in. Do I need to mute uh, my computer at all, or you'll just make that adjustment on your end? You'll need to mute your computer in just a second here. Let me just get this going. I apologize nope. for this inconvenience. I've, uh, having used this system before, it's usually when we have large calls that audio can be a problem. So that's a, uh, a compliment to uh, all that we're doing here is that we have so many people on with us and need to adjust our audio system here. Your audio pin should show up as you, uh, you can just reach over as a panelist and you can push telephone instead of mic and speakers and it'll come up with that audio pin but I just I just texted you also the information. Oh perfect. Okay. Perfect, perfect. All right. I am calling it as we speak. Okay, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, as we're waiting for Matt Hollis to come on, if you don't mind, raise your hand and tell me if you can hear me loud and clear. Okay, we're getting several hands raised. Go ahead and put your hands back down. Thank you so much. I've had several people say that they could hear perfectly throughout. Um, that is amazing. We're having some people have difficulties. We apologize, ladies and gentlemen, for this little technical problem. We will have it solved in just a matter of seconds. Am I coming, Am I coming through? through? Your sound is coming through, but on the phone, it's actually still coming through on your computer. All right. All right. I, I'm, I'm talking, talking on the on phone, phone here. here. Hey, mute your computer, please, your computer microphone. The computer, the computer microphone, microphone is muted. muted. Okay. Is that coming through better? Is that coming through better? Yes, sir, that's perfect. Thank you. Go I ahead. hear a slight, I hear a slight delay, delay, on, delay my on my end. Okay, let me try one thing. Now try it. Okay, let's see how we're doing there. Perfect. All right. Now we will... Uh, go right to, to work here as we've got lots of good material to cover today and again it's my privilege to be here. What we're going to be talking about today and Ray I will tell you um, if you would um, please feel free to interrupt me. I get uh, talking. I teach so much. I get used to talking and talking and if you uh, need to, me to stop just uh, please go ahead and interrupt me if we have any questions. Um, my clicking is not advancing the slides. Can you just click anywhere on the screen? Anywhere on the screen where I'm pointing with my mouse right now, and you'll be able to advance the slide. Just click it with your mouse, just that's, like that. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. And we're, and not, we're not coming, coming through. through. Okay, you just tell me when to advance the slide. Okay, okay let's, let's move, move on. on to the next. We're there. Okay, I'm not seeing anything on my end. Now try it, Matt. There we go. So in this lecture, the role of the thyroid, we will talk just briefly about and where iodine fits into the thyroid, um, and then types of endocrine dysfunction, and then the three steps to balancing the thyroid, specifically supporting the thyroid, supporting the conversion pathways, and cleansing the metabolic pathway. Um, next slide. So the thyroid, um, the endocrine system is one of the most uniquely um, interconnected systems in the body, um, and so you really need to be aware of that. Um, and I bring this up because it's very important to understand that the thyroid um, is an integral part of the entire endocrine system, so it will 
affect and be affected by the entire system. I remember early on in, in my clinical experience, years and years ago, having a lady that came in and had been on name had been on a medical intervention for um, thyroid imbalance since the late 70s. And she came in, and when we did our testing, her thyroid was not the problem. It was one of her other endocrine glands. And so we worked for a series of months to nourish and feed that particular endocrine gland. And within a matter of months, she was down to a quarter of the amount of that pharmaceutical medication that she needed because all along it wasn't the, the thyroid itself that was causing the problem. Um, we have, and, and we you know, don't have in this lecture to go into great depth for that, but I want you to understand and in our other programs we go into full endocrinology, but you need to understand that they're very inter intricately connected and as such, um, we're really dealing with a whole endocrine imbalance if you're dealing with thyroid imbalance. Can we move on? And next slide. So Matt, Matt, you do have mouse control and it's working. Oh, perfect. Okay. So the final. Um, okay, perfect. We're back. Uh, I've got full control here. All right. So the thyroid's primary um, function, just so everyone kind of has that foundation, is to produce these thyrosine-based hormones called, um, that are you know, specifically T3 and T4, are the hormones that most people are commonly um, familiar with, the um, triodothyronine and thyroxine. Those are the ones that get the most press and the most talked about. Um, there is that as, as process of decarboxylation. You will often also have um, T, 0A and T1A, so there's other um, thyronine-based um, hormones. It's really what we're, we're dealing with when we're talking about what the thyroid produces. Um, so what happens with those in the, in the body, the effects of these hormones and why they're tied to everything is what I want you to understand. These hormones are tied to every system of the body because of their tie to the very cell structure, the very mitochondria of every cell in the body. They require, every cell of your body requires this T3 to, to properly function and to properly produce the energy. So because of it, your, your basal metabolic rate, um, your protein synthesis, you know, long bone growth, increase of the body, um, I mean everything you see on here um, really ties down to the fact that every cell of your body is using this T3 hormone, this triodothyronine, to regulate energy so throughout the body. So this connection to the mitochondria and the energy production of every cell in the body is why thyroid imbalance can be, have such a range of effect on people. It really causes entire body imbalance. So they'll have no energy, they, they won't feel well, they, um, you know, they won't have the ability to, to gain weight, you know, to, to properly metabolize and, and use weight, so they'll, you know, have weight gain. There's a lot of things that go on. And the thyroid um, imbalance can quite literally slow down the function of every system of the body. We've done some tests in some different labs around the country and seen people that have had, you know, 20 or 30 percent of their cells of the, in their entire body that are not able to produce um, and go through that proper energy function, so they're literally just on hold. So, I mean, you think about somebody from brain function to um, neurological function to everything. If you have, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 percent of the entire cells of your body just kind of on, you know, on break all the time, it's not going to be just one symptom. It really becomes a very systemic um, problem that we're looking at here. So. When we start to understand the link of these hormones into the entire body, then we want to ask the question of iodine. Now, it does my heart good to know that most people, when you talk about thyroid imbalance, they'll know that iodine is the thing you need. And while I'm grateful for that, I also think that that simplistic view is sometimes detrimental because people will think that it's, that it's always as simple as just needing more iodine. So let's set the stage by um, mentioning why it is we need um, more iodine in the in the body. So uh, the simple reason is that the uh, the proper iodine intake is linked to the T4 and T3. Um, that is, is that iodine is the primary element um, that is used to to make that. So the thyroid doesn't magically pull these thyronine hormones out of thin air. The 
thyroid actually takes the raw element of iodine and then turns around and produces the, the T4 and T3 um, in, in that case. Um, specifically, the T4 is, is what it primarily produces, and then the other is metabolized, in, uh, metabolized into T3. Now, selenium is another element that you need to be aware of. It's a secondary element that um, is actually not linked to the production as much as it is linked to the um, metabolism that we'll talk about in a minute. But the important thing that you understand is that the body cannot produce either of these substances, uh, being uh, iodine or selenium. It doesn't have the ability to produce them. There's no way for your body to make these hormones if you don't give it these raw elements to, to make. It's like getting at, you know, having a construction site and, and your construction crew there, but there's no wood to build the house. Nothing will happen even if everything else is in balance if you're not consuming. So iodine consumption is very important. Now in modern deficiencies um, of today, why we see it so commonly is um, dietary iodine and selenium dysfunction. Our deficiencies. Um, that's a very, very common thing. Iodine is primarily um, derived from sea vegetation, and very few people in our standard American diet or even our um, internationally westernized diet are consuming adequate amounts of sea vegetation to get good dietary amounts of iodine. And then trace minerals and selenium being um, deficient in most vegetables is also uh, a problem. Now, uh, for those that are, um, have that question, um, oh, over 50 years ago, recognizing what they called the Goiter Belt going through the Midwest, they came up with a great idea that um, table salt, which does sound like a good idea. Somebody was trying to think there. But you need to understand why that doesn't work. Um, the process to iodize it meant that they had to mine out all of the trace minerals that are normally present with good sea salt or good um, naturally occurring salt. So instead, they're left with just straight sodium in order to iodize it. Now, the, the problem behind this, and the reason it, it, it one is you would have to eat an enormous amount of salt to get the dietary amounts of iodine that you really w would require to something in balance. But the other problem is that iodine is reactive to heat. And most everything that we put on this water iodized salt and gets heated. And if it isn't the heat that's the problem, iodine is also reactive to oxygen. If, if you reduce it down to its elemental state, it's oxy uh, very oxidative, has a high oxidative potential. And even, so even if you weren't cooking with it, everybody's salt shaker has this problem that it has holes in the top of it. So between the oxygen and the heat, you need to understand we're not getting any uh, iodized salt. So we're really left to either supplement it or eat high amounts of sea vegetation to get um, the iodine. The other few things that we'll talk about is low-level radiation pollution um, and then receptor site toxicity. Um, an autonomic nerve, uh, an autonomic imbalance is a very um, important piece of this. When your body is under a high amount of stress, it burns at a really rapidly increased rate. It burns these thyroid hormones. So people that are living in a stressed state also not just have the, the, the load of normal requirements, but they have a really high um, increased need for, for these specific hormones. So all of those together is kind of what leads us to our modern um, deficiency that we're, we're dealing with. Now, um, when we talk about to toxicity, we're not going to get in-depth into the periodic table, but you can see over here on the right, we, um, see that. we have the little halogen gas family. Um, and to take you back to your chemistry days, you remember that the elements that are towards the bottom are larger. So all of these in this row are family. And so anywhere that Iodine is accepted. They don't mind if bromine or chloride or fluorine show up as well because they're family. The problem is that these are smaller in size, the fluoride and chlorine and bromine. They're smaller in size than the iodine right here. And so what happens is all of these other elements fill up the normal receptor sites that iodine would be properly absorbed into. So that's the second problem we're facing is even if people have adequate amounts of iodine, they're consuming such you know, toxic levels of the chlorine and fluoride that they're, they're filling up those receptor sites, which is why, I, even though it's out of the scope of this, please make note on your notes if you are not using a reverse osmosis system or a good water filtration system to um, get a hold of nature's sunshine, get one of those sent right away because you, you can't properly balance the thyroid and get these levels of iodine into the system if you don't take out the fluoride and the chlorine that you would normally be getting. So, 
we will move on with that. The, um, another um, problem that I mentioned is the toxicity level because of I-131. Iodine-131 is a process of uh, production of nuclear fission. Um, after the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster, we had very high levels um, come across the country. One of the benefits I have in working with doctors all around the country as the director of the International Institute of Natural Wellness Education is that I was able to kind of watch this move across the country. Um, about a week following the disaster, I started getting calls from doctors that I work with up and down the West Coast that were telling me about um, people coming in with just abnormally high levels of that shows up as thyroid imbalance, emotional imbalance, um, fatigue, all of the things that we would normally link to a thyroid imbalance were coming up in just huge numbers. Well, we started, um, you know, watching it, and then it came across. Now it had particular um, interest to me because my wife, who has had is very healthy, has had healthy pregnancies, never had any problem with any pregnancy. She was pregnant at the time, and she started to bleeding. We had to have her on bed rest. It really threw her entire system out of whack when, when Idaho got hit with its, um, you know, the I-131 pollution that came across Idaho. And, and then I watched it, you know, I called um, doctors in the Midwest and on the East Coast, and we just watched it like clockwork move across the country. So many of you have been exposed to that as well. Um, and the proper ways to remove it is just the stuff we're going to talk about, and high amounts of iodine, um, chlorophyll, um, ben hydrated bentonite is the other substance I use to get I-1 out of the body. But needless to say, there's many reasons that we have this situation that we're in as far as iodine um, deficiency and thyroid imbalance being so common in America. Um, the, uh, the ways that we test iodine, and this is why the I-131 is so, um, was so detrimental, is iodine has a unique um, characteristic that your body will absorb it based on its need. So what we do um, to test people for iodine is we just take, we take an iodine tincture and we paint a little patch on their arm and we watch to see how fast that absorbs. And for people that are very deficient, it will absorb very quickly. And for people that aren't, you know, uh, uh, 24 hours later, there should still be a little outline of that little iodine patch that we painted on their arm if they, if they have proper adequate amounts of iodine in their body. Most people do not. Most people will find that little patch disappears rather quickly. And that's because their body is absorbing it very quickly. So when people that are that were deficient in iodine, when, they, when we have these little particulates of iodine-130 in the air, it absorbed into their skin, and thus we have the problem that we have, have faced. Now, the other ways to determine if someone needs to take more iodine is, of course, if we already know there's a thyroid imbalance um, or a metabolic imbalance of any kind. Um, living in modern culture is always my um, common joke. If you're living in modern culture, you need to be supplementing with iodine. Um, because it's really a, a fundamental nutrient to what we're dealing with here. So let's talk about the endocrine dysfunction. Um, again, we'll, for, for the sake of this, I want to just point out the, the difference between type 2 and type 1 imbalances. In natural wellness, we recognize type 1 and type 2 endocrine gland dysfunctions in all endocrine glands. And that's a real big difference from what uh, modern medicine generally recognizes. Um, they generally only recognize um, dysfunction 2 or type 2 dysfunction in a pancreatic um, dysfunction or what's commonly known as a diabetic dysfunction. Um, we also um, don't see it as just one or the other. Um, in natural medicine, we look at the multi-causation effect, so we're looking at uh, it being a little of both. But uh, just to understand that when we talk about type 1 and type 2, um, type 1 dysfunctions are primi primarily a production imbalance. So there's, there's a breakdown in, in the gland that's producing something. Um, so there's an imbalance in, in what's being produced in the type of the pancreas, the, the pancreatic, um, what's being produced in the pancreas is, has a breakdown. So there's not enough um, being produced for the body to properly regulate blood sugar. So people have to um, supplement with, with non-natural insulin because the way that their body isn't producing it properly. Now, in a type 2 dysfunction, it's not a, it's not a breakdown in the production. It's a, it's a metabolism thing. In the case of, of a diabetic example that we're using, it's not that they're, they think this isn't producing it. It's that the cells aren't properly able to absorb it. And Professor Lawrence Smith, who teaches for us, 
um, in our Holistic Wellness Coach program, spend several classes going really in depth into this process. But uh, it's sufficient to say it is, is that the body can't absorb it. And that's really what we're looking at. Now, in type 2 um, dysfunctions, they're commonly caused by lifestyle imbalance or toxicity, some of the things that we've already talked about in the case of the thyroid. So in the thyroid, it's a result of a breakdown in the thyronine um, T4 to T3 metabolic pathway. So again, um, and just so you understand, let me see if my slides will advance here. The, the body, the thyroid itself, primarily produces T4, huge amounts of T4 in relation to T3. T3 is, is, is what the cells use, um, but they're, they're not, what happens is the hypothalamus, when there's more T3 needed, the hypothalamus signals the thyroid, or, um, or excuse me, signals the liver to convert T4 that's available in the blood into T3. And that's converted in the P450 pathway of the liver. So, you know, further metabolism takes place at the cellular level through decarboxylation and some of the things that I mentioned earlier, that this conversion from T4 to T3 primarily takes place in the liver. You know, um, so, and, and as I mentioned, we're dealing with, in some cases, as high as 20 to 1 levels of T4 to T3 in the blood. But yet the cells are using T3. So sometimes what we'll run into is people take just a simple blood test, and based on the levels of T4 and T3, they think it's an imbalance in the thyroid. But it's not, in, in many cases, ever a problem in the thyroid. It's that the liver and this hypothalamus signal has, has had a problem because the liver isn't um, healthy enough to properly metabolize at the speed it's needed. So whenever we're looking at a thyroid imbalance, we're also always, always, always going to be looking at a type 2 dysfunction, which would be a result of the liver. Um, does, that, does that, I want to make sure that's clear. Are we getting any questions on that, Ray? So again, just to kind of recap, the type 1 imbalance would be a breakdown in the thyroid's ability to produce the T4 and T3. Again, it produces about 20 times the amount of T4 as it does T3, and a type 2 imbalance would be a liver toxicity where the liver isn't able to convert or metabolize that T4 into the readily available T3 as on demand. Matt, I was just going to ask your question. Um, there, there doesn't seem to be any questions um, about that particular uh, designation between type 1 and type 2. So you're doing okay. great. Just continue on. We'll go through All the right. questions. Perfect, perfect. So what, now with that stage kind of set, so we have that, that foundation of what we're dealing with. I've talked about why iodine is so important and selenium is so important. Selenium is linked to that conversion in the, the um, T4 to T3. That primarily happens um, with the mineral selenium. So we have the primary foundation building blocks. We have the, the minerals we need, the iodine and the selenium. So we've done that with our person that has an imbalance. And so now we know that body is capable of both producing and metabolizing um, these hormones. Now we need to look at what steps we're going to take them through because as a competent um, practitioner, you're not going to just throw iodine at it. You're going to look at the whole picture, look at both types of, of endocrine imbalances because as I mentioned, it's off by causation effects. So it's not just going to be one thing or the other. And so as we move on here, let's talk about the three steps and what I would suggest for our steps to support the, the, this process. So of course we um, support the thyroid production of T4 with proper amounts of iodine. We support the conversion of T4 into T3 with the liver um, by, support, by you know, supporting formulas and selenium. And then we support the conversion by cleansing the liver. That's often where we will run into problems in the, the process is this cleansing cycle. The liver um, gets so heavily laden with toxins in our modern culture, and then radiation pollution and all these other things that we're facing are, are just added on top of that. And so oftentimes, in order for somebody to properly start balancing the thyroid, you have to go through some very specific cleansing protocols with the liver that we're going to talk about for just a minute. So step one, proper consumption of sea vegetation, um, primarily kelp. 
Um, liquid C um, vegetation extracts will sometimes help those um, with compromised digestion or absorption. I generally always use both. I have people take a liquid and I have people take the capsules. Um, I want to really strongly drive home that this is one of the areas. You know, there are certain um, nutrients, specifically when I deal with herbs. I, you know, we hear the horror stories of, of people getting herbs that really have almost no active ingredient present in the capsule. In the case of kelp, one of the, my even bigger concerns is what you're getting along with it. For both kelp and omega-3 supplementation, my biggest concern is not just if you're getting the nutrients you're hoping for, it's what you're getting along with it. So I really want to strongly emphasize that you never and never let anybody you're working with get kelp that has not properly been tested. I mean, the, when we're talking about liver toxicity, and this is why I can bring it back to what we're talking about. So imagine the scenario I just mentioned. We have somebody that has a thyroid imbalance. Part of that thyroid imbalance is a type 2 imbalance, meaning that the liver is just heavily toxic and not able to properly convert that T4 into T3 so your cells can use it. And then to help the situation, we go ahead and give them a kelp product that is laden with heavy metals, leads, mercury, fire retardant, and all the things that we find in the ocean. And all it does is further toxify the liver. So maybe it added a little iodine to the situation, but we further toxify the liver, co compounding the, the type 2 metabolic dysfunction. So this isn't just a, a passing statement to say, oh yeah, and make sure you get clean um, kelp. No, this is a really serious piece of it because you can actually make the situation worse by supplementing help if you're using something that hasn't been properly tested. I've seen um, practitioners that weren't um, acting very ethically do that and when they were using just a, a generic kelp and actually make the situation worse, not because of the iodine. And I've actually seen people you know, then go on to say too much iodine will cause and make the imbalance worse. No, that is not true. Really, your body needs mass amounts of iodine. So too much iodine isn't causing a problem. What we're seeing when you hear people say that is the type of kelp they're using has high levels of um, neurotoxins that are toxifying the liver and actually compounding the type 2 metabolic process. So that's the important thing to, to be aware of there. Um, so second step that we're going to talk about here is going to be liver support. Now, um, and you'll hear this um, it is for anyone that uh, does more classes with us through the Institute and through our Holistic Wellness Coach Program, one of the things you'll hear repeated over and over and over that we teach all of our students is that there it doesn't matter what part of the body you're dealing with, top to bottom, inside or out, there's always three steps to healing. You stabilize, then you cleanse, and then you nourish. Those are, you know, immutable across the board. You That is the, the path of healing. So the reason that we have step two in this process is not cleanse the liver, is you first always stabilize. You get the liver the nutrients it needs to be nourished because I don't care how good the cleanse is, cleanses by nature are always attacks on the system. So that's why I only have people cleanse one system at a time. And that is also why I always stabilize if there's a real problem, you stabilize that that first. So that's why we see our little guy down here reminding us to feed the liver. So things like milk thistles and dandelions and beetroot and leplerum and all the blends that are liver balancing. Um, there is a, a liver balancing formula in traditional Chinese medicine um, that is really, really useful that I always put people on prior to ever going into a full cleanse protocol. So I wouldn't ever start out with just a cleanse protocol. We'll talk about that a little more as we get into the cleanse stuff. Um, the daily vitamin uh, minerals that are high in selenium, approximately 100 micrograms or you know, 101 to 200 micrograms are going to be very good, but you want those higher doses. You'll see selenium listed on a lot of supplements, but not in the, in the high enough doses. So you want to get proper amounts of those, and then of course, um, moving on to step three. So what I've now, just to recap, we're, we're getting people proper amounts of iodine. We're getting them iodine that is not going to add further um, toxins to the liver. We're now supporting the liver with proper balanced formulas that are going to nourish and help heal that liver because we live in a modern society where our liver is really overworked. It's the unsung hero of health in, in all that it does for us. And we want it to properly convert 
the um, thyronine hormones from into the T3 that our cells can actually use. And so we need that P450 pathway of the liver to be clean and, and ready to go. And so in order to do that, the third step, once we've gone through a proper amount of time that's really based on the, the, the wellness of the person, it may be a month, it might be two months, um, whatever um, is required to kind of nourish the liver enough that you feel confident that now that liver can go through a cleanse protocol. And then we go into the step three, which is um, that is cleansing that conversion of T4 into T3 pathway. So as I said before, we're going to love our liver, we're going to heat it, and then we're going to love it by cleansing it. You know, we do something, I, I do cleanses on an annual basis. Um, every, every cleanse of the system, I do it all throughout the year, different times of the year for different cleanses. Highly recommend that. It's just a house cleaning. We, we just need to do it. So if you have somebody that doesn't remember the last time they did a liver cleanse, it's time. <laughs> if, if you can't remember, it is time to do a liver cleanse. So um, let me back up here. I am trying to see if I have. It looks like we lost one little slide here, Ray. That Which one is that, Matt? That has our list. wonder where that little slide ran off to. Well, um, let me do this. The, the final considerations, the cleanse protocols that we do, I just had a list of the couple of nutrients that we use. Uh, on that same slide, we also, um, I was also recommending that anyone would like um, tomorrow, and um, we, uh, myself and um, one of our professors, it's former um, dean of Central States College of Naturopathic Medicine, him and myself will be doing a live recording um, that will then be made available on specifically cleansing the liver. And so if you would like to email me, I can send you a link to that. It'll be available by end of the week, and I would be glad to send you a link where you can listen and just you'll go through all of the um, nutrients that we normally use for that liver cleansing protocol. Um, let me, are you, are you there, Ray? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So my apologies for that slide not being there. Let me, um, the, just so you understand, the, the common things that I use for cleansing are going to be two different liver um, supporting formulas, the Chinese formula and then another liver formula that's just meant to cleanse. Then we use the um, N-acetylcysteine and the cordyceps. So I use those four things together along with diet and a few other changes to go through a one to two week um, protocol. And like I said, I would be glad to email that out um, to anyone that would like both the, the written form or the video. I can send those both out. Um, let me just give you my email. It's going to be drhollis, so that's D-R-H-O-L-L-I-S-T, and that's at knowyourwellness.org. You see that down in the lower left-hand corner of your slides right there. So um, with that, you can go ahead and just send them. And if you'll be so kind as to put liver cleanse in the subject line, that way I will know um, that it's for that. And we can go ahead. I'll have um, Deanna, um, one of our office people here, just reply back to those, send you those links when they become available in a couple of days for both the written and the video form. There's uh, something I want to mention in the final considerations before we open it up for questions. This is an uh, Please circle this if you're looking at this, if you have printed out slides in your mind, circle this over and over and over. Because never cleanse the liver until you have cleansed the elimination pathways of the large and small intestine. This is not a kind suggestion. This is a hard and fast rule that we need to drive home to our people. I have had so many instances of people coming to me very, very, very ill because they, they heard about a liver cleanse. They heard about this fattish new thing, and they found it online, and they did this great liver cleanse, and it made them extremely sick. When we understand what's going on with the liver, it's what's filtering out all these toxins, all these substances that are very damaging to the body. And then when a liver cleanse is going to tell it to flush all those toxins out, well, it's going to flush them out down the pancreatic bile duct into the top of the small intestine. 
And from there, it's going to go right on out the regular elimination pathways. Now, if you have a small intestine or large intestine that are impacted, that are not moving properly, that have not recently been cleansed, what will happen is most of those toxins can sit there long enough that they get reabsorbed into the small intestine, go up the hepatic pathway back to the liver. The liver has to go through the process of refiltering them out, which is extremely taxing. Um, I just had this experience um, from someone, oh, it hasn't even been a month ago, and they were running a 102 fever. They were in the, um, you know, went into the now care. I mean, they were very, very sick. And it was, again, that they had tried the liver cleanse without doing the other cleanse protocols. Um, so most of you have available very good resources to do small and large intestines, and I'll make sure to include those links. Um, we have a lot of information on those, and we can include those links if you would like as well. But I want to make sure you understand that it is extremely important. That, and this actually works very well, because as I mentioned, we always stabilize the weak system. So if I know that somebody's liver is the, is the weakened system, I can stabilize it by nourishing it, Meantime, I can go ahead and go through the proper cleanse protocols for, as you heard me say, we only cleanse one system at a time. So you always do large and then small intestine. And so we go through those proper protocols for those, which gives the liver time to feel a little nourished. We cleanse the, the, the some large and small intestine, and then it's a perfect opportunity to then go through a proper balanced liver cleanse protocol. So now we have went through all three steps of feeding people the right nutrients, the selenium, and the iodine, uh, nourishing the, the liver so it can do its job, and of cleansing out that P450 pathway so that when the cells in your body need the T3, it can, through the hypothalamus, have that single signal go down to the liver, and immediately your liver can dump as much um, as your body wants or needs, um, convert that T4 into T3. Now, the other thing that I want you to be aware of, and I kind of touched on this, is people are often told they have a thyroid imbalance when the thyroid is really not the cause. It's just, it's just a common test that's cheap and easy to do. Um, you know, liver cleanse will help with all the endocrine um, imbalances, so you're not going to go wrong by doing a liver cleanse. Again, if you, haven't, if you can't remember the last time you did it, then it's probably time to do a liver cleanse. So you can't go wrong with it. Um, and then if we can get the last slide to come up here. I want to end with this before we open it up to questions. As you heard me say, um, this is a topic that I'm very, very passionate about because it deals with nutrition. And I would echo the words of Royal Lee, you know, 60 years ago when he said one of the biggest tragedies of human civilization is the precedence of chemical therapies over nutrition. It's the substitution of artificial therapies over natural of poisons over food in which we are feeding people poison trying to correct the reactions of starvation. Most of what we see of liver, or excuse me, of thyroid imbalance is a reaction of starvation. We have starved our liver for the right nutrients to be vital and healthy and to cleanse properly, and we have starved our thyroid for the core building blocks of iodine and selenium to really be able to do its job. And then that insult to injury Sometimes people turn around and take a chemical poison to try to react correct the imbalance when all we, in most cases, need to do is treat these wonderful glands properly, and they will give us all, the, all, all we need. So with that, I will turn things back over to you, Ray. But I'm so grateful to uh, be able to, to point that out. Well, you did great, Dr. Matt. That was awesome. Really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. We would like to ask a few questions, if that's all right, Absolutely. before we let you go. Absolutely. First of all, uh, we've, we've had a lot of people asking for your email address again. Uh, I'm going to yes, back up glad. the slide and go ahead and just give your email address. OK. I, and the slide that had it on it is somehow the slide that in our conversion between systems, we lost that slide. <laughs> So okay. um, I don't have a way of typing it up, but if you, if I can just tell it to people, if you want that email address, just have a pen and paper ready. It's going to be D R H O L L I S T. Again, that's D R H O L L I S T, and that's at knowyourwellness 
dot org. It's K N O W your wellness dot O R G. Very good. So yeah, okay. and again, just put uh, liver cleanse in the subject line, and I will get those available to you on all the um, the you know what we use, and you can, you guys all have good sources for the nutrients we use in our liver cleanse. So you're in business. Okay, very good. And uh, again, don't put a space between Dr. Hollist. It's just Dr. Hollist at knowyourwellness dot org. Correct. Yeah, and, thank uh, you. And just make sure that you've got that. And, and that org, not dot com. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we will get that done for tonight's webinar and make sure that that slide is corrected. Let's go ahead and answer some questions. We've had a lot of people saying, "Thank you, thank you, thank you." They've really enjoyed the web webinar and. They love the information. They thought it was excellent. So you you rock the world. Thanks so much. Um, oh, glad. I mean, once once people start to realize this, it's like a light bulb goes on. It's been trying to throw iodine at the problem and throw kelp at it, and nothing's happening. And once we start to realize how the endocrine system works, it opens up a whole new world of opportunity to really start healing people or letting the nutrients okay. heal them. That's excellent. Um, we have a question here. If we're cleansing the small intestine first and then the large intestine uh, before cleansing the liver, what uh, NSP products should we use uh, to uh, for each cleanse? Um, Are you okay with me answering those yes. specific name okay. ones there, Ray? Okay. Well, one correction, let me reverse that order. We always work from the outside in. So the first um, one we're going to do is the large intestine because it's, it's when we're working from that end in, that's where we start, is the large intestine. Um, I'm going to use one of the three formulas that, that NSP uses, the Tau He, um, the dieters, or the clean start. Um, depending on people, I use a lot of Tau He um, and a lot of, uh, well, a lot of all three of them. The one thing I usually add to it is going to be either the, um, is one of the fiber supplements. I do add a little fiber to it, so that way I can control the fiber amounts based on the person's regularity. The other quick thing that you may want to be aware of is what's called a transit time test, which is where you have someone eat a marker food, um, like meat. Um, sometimes I'll hear people talk about using a half a can of, uh, of canned corn. That works really well as long as after the test is done, you then have a talk with the person about the breakdown in their chewing process that allowed the corn to come out the other end visible. But that process is you simply eat a marker food and then have them watch or when that leaves the body. We would like to see that in, in that 21 to you know 26 hour range, somewhere in that range. So sometimes that will help people understand how fast the slow move, food's moving through so they can also balance it with the fiber. And then the small intestine is very simple, just the small intestine um, cleanse, you know, just label the small intestine um, detox formula, cleanse formula, um, that's the marshmallow and pepsin. And I have people take three to four capsules every waking hour. Professor Smith teaches that class for us um, in our in our um, lecture series, and talks about. And that's been the experience we've had: is two to three bottles, taking um, two, you know, taking those three capsules every waking hour. I know that's different than the dosing that is recommended. So officially follow the recommendation of the dosing on the label, but that's how I do. Great. A uh, couple more questions here. Uh, this is regarding medical tests that people take. Uh, this is from Miss Brittany. She says, "How accurate are the T3 and T4 uh, blood tests, and what better testing might be available?" Well, the, the, I'll answer the second question first. There isn't better blood tests available, but I don't look at those as hard and fast indicators. Again, because we know that most of what the thyroid is producing is a T4. And we know that at any given moment when the body needs it, if the liver is healthy, the, the body can produce and metabolize that T4 and the T3 at a moment's notice. So that level that I just took in my blood test was a little momentary sliver of a shot that could change dramatically um, day to day. So it really, um, I don't, to be honest, I don't use either of those tests when I have um, somebody that is an imbalance, I'm not saying they're not useful, but for me, when I have somebody that has those symptoms that does have an imbalance, whether they have a blood test or not, I'm going to go through the, the, 
the things that I've already outlined in this lecture of making sure to properly um, get that airway folks. Very good. And that is, that is really one of the problems is people look at that little snapshot of a blood test and say, oh, your thyroid's not working, you're going to have to be on this for the rest of your life. And they give someone a poison instead of, as Royal Lee said, feeding the body and giving them the nutrition. Excellent. Okay, uh, second to last question. Can estrogen overload cause the thyroid from doing its job even if the thyroid blood level shows normal? Oh, I like whoever asked that question. <laughs> we need about another four hours, if that's okay, Ray. <laughs> we, we have, have about 30 um, seconds on that. One of our professors teaches a mini-part series on endocrinology, and the whole goal in that process is understanding the interaction between all these primary glands and estrogen and estrogen mimickers along with the RT3 that the, that the um, adrenal glands produce. The, the short answer is yes, and we need to get you into the right trainings and the right classes to really answer your question on how to understand the tie, the estrogen, you know, and all of the other endocrine glands. So yes, it does, but you're the right person to get some more advanced training. Okay, great. And then uh, Christy has a question. She says, I'm already taking T4 and T3. If I do the cleanses, how does this affect those? And will I be able to cut down or uh, get rid of those after cleansing? Well, um, assuming when she said she's taking that, she's talking about a pharmaceutical um, version of that. So my answer would be, um, my job as a natural wellness professional is to nourish and cleanse your organs and give them the best chance to work properly. And what I would suggest after going through those protocols is that you request from whoever, whatever um, medical doctor put you on those medications. I will never take you off them, nor should anyone that is a natural wellness professional, but rather suggest that you keep in close communication and request that the doctor that put you on those retest and see if it is proper to do a change. As you, as you heard me mention to begin this class that I have seen that often where people then will retest and realize they don't need near as much as they thought. So yes, I've seen that happen over and over, but the proper step would be to do the protocols while keeping in close communication with your doctor and telling him, hey, I'm trying to um, you know, do healthy things to increase my thyroid function. Can you retest and, and see if, if I still need these, these amounts? Excellent. Well, Dr. Hollis, we really do appreciate it. Um, that is outstanding, and uh, if you'll just stick with us just in case something else comes up, uh, we will Absolutely. a few more slides here and end the webinar. Folks, let me